Hello my lovelies, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. Welcome to my Floss Tube channel. I have so much to share with you. There's so many fun things going on. So many fun, awesome finishes to share. My stitching, just so much to share with you. So grab something yummy to drink and we'll get started. So let's get started. I have my notes here. As you can see, totally different setup. Um, I'm kind of penned in here, so hopefully this works and I don't have to get out for anything, but we'll see. Um, welcome. I am pretty much all set up in my new room. I can't tell you how thrilling it is to be in a house. I just, I can't even tell you. But anyways, welcome to my new subscribers. It has been quite a journey to get here. Just a little bit of background. My husband and I just bought this house. This is actually a month today since we closed and moved in. We have gotten a lot done in that month. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. For those of you that have been with me for a while, <laughs> you've been with me for a while. <laughs> it's been kind of crazy, but we are making such good progress. Um, let's see, I'm, I have my notes. So last weekend was Mike's long weekend. He does work a 980 shift, so he gets every other Friday off. So we spent both the afternoons of both Friday and Saturday painting upstairs. Um, we got so much done. We're just kind of amazed and proud of ourselves. So the painting starts again tomorrow, all day. It was only half a day last week because every morning we had to get the lows <laughs> and get more paint and, uh, excuse me, and other stuff. Um, but anyways, tomorrow I think we'll have everything we need and we'll get painting first thing in the morning and just paint for as long as we can stand it. We really hope to have pretty much the whole upstairs minus our bedroom because we still have to paint that, but the more, the whole, um, kitchen, dining, living room area, um, we hope to have done by the end of the day tomorrow. It does go fast once you get all the, the cutting in, in done. I'm in charge of the cutting in, <laughs> except for the high places. The uh, the man of the house won't let me get on a ladder. Even though he is afraid of heights, his manly protective instincts come out and he won't let me get up on the high ladder. We have vaulted ceilings, so it is pretty high. So whatever. It will hopefully be done tomorrow. We are having friends over for dinner on Sunday. People from Friends from Maryland are coming out here for the week. Um, and so they will be coming here and I'm so excited to show them. Um, her her name's Becky. Her name will come up again in a little bit. Um, and then next weekend, we are going with them over to the Tetons and spending the weekend in Jackson and in the Tetons. So, I guess, happy, joy, peace, love all the things are flowing in my life right now and i'm hoping to share them all with you so what else do we have going on so many things news black sampler november i actually put black sampler september on one of my posts on instagram <laughs> that was like the day after the time change i'm like i know we fell back an hour we didn't fall back two months but anyways black sampler november is happening i was not going to get involved in it because I have so many other things going on right now, but I saw a certain pattern and couldn't resist. So um, that's kind of fun to see. I believe, and again, I am not totally clued in on everything yet at this point, just because I haven't had a chance to really be watching a lot of things and reading a lot of things. But I believe this was started by yeah, Jacob from um, Modern Folk Embroidery. And... Um, it's just kind of taken off. So I'm kind of thrilled to, to be taking part of that. And I will show you my, my pattern for it here in a second, my start for it. Um, speaking of Jacob, Modern Folk Embroidery, if you haven't yet, watch his video from, oh, it's probably about a week ago now. Um, 
10 days, 12 days actually, I think it was the end of October, he and his partner went to India and he did a little video in India. And of course, <laughs> India, right? But towards the end of that video, he talked about the um, stitch along and it's gonna be a mystery this next year, mystery stitch along that, um, you know, his annual stitch along. So he gives you some details on that. I think what he said is that it's going to be a reproduction sampler that is going to be this stitch along. It is a mystery, um, but he gave details. He gave stitch count. Um, I think it's a monochrome. Um, I may have to join in on this one too. It sounds really interesting. So check out his video. I will, again, hopefully, I, I don't, well, I will hopefully remember to link it below. Um, the other thing that's happening that I'm just tickled pink about, um, I saw the advent calendar for 2020, the design by Marula Mikhail. I don't know whether I said that right. Her floss tube or her Etsy shop is Crochetta Agogo. And I, I'm probably butchering that too. But if you follow me any place, you've seen that. I saw this pattern on Etsy and I was like, oh, it's a it's a 24 day advent calendar with a gourd. I should just show you a picture, shouldn't I? <laughs> so cute. And I posted a picture of it on my Facebook group. And I thought, you know, and I said, you know, there, I, I can't do this. There's, there's just no way I have too much going on. But OMG, everybody fell in love. And rightly so. Is that not adorable? And then that gorgeous scene on the bottom. So the momentum started. People started posting. People started responding. People started buying it. And all of a sudden, we have a, had a stitch along. <laughs> We will have a stitch along, hasn't started yet. I posted it then on Instagram because it was obvious that something was happening here. I posted it on Instagram and the same response on Instagram. Everybody's like, oh, that is so cute. I have to do that. When do we start? So we are having a stitch along. Christmas Advent SAL <laughs> is the hashtag. I don't have anything pulled for it yet. My plan is to do all of those little motifs separately. Um, there's quite a few that are doing it on one big piece, but I'm going to do it separately. All right, I just crawled out from under my little space here, <laughs> all of my apparatus eye, because I wanted to show you this. So I decided I'm gonna do it separately because I have, let's see if I can get this in any sort of order and then wave it in your face. And this is only a part of it. So I have all these little bits and pieces, leftover pieces of linen, just small things that I was like, you know something? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do it on different pieces. I don't care if the count's different. So I'll, I will have some that are smaller, some that are larger. Um, I don't care if the color matches. No, I'm not gonna do anything real wild with the color. Most of them will probably be more neutral colors, but there may be a few that are on different I'm colors. I'm going to just use the called for DMC and keep that consistent across the whole, the whole pattern. But yeah, I'm really excited about this and I think you guys are too. <laughs> so that's awesome. So when I first started talking about this, I had said December 1st. There's, I know at least one person has had had, all, had this pattern before and has already started it. There was another person that said, do we have to wait till December 1st? And I'm thinking, no. I'm thinking, why don't we start in conjunction with my holiday gift extravaganza? So that is starting the day after Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. Um, I don't even know. Where, where it is. Okay, so that is November 25th. So how about if November 26th, we start our Christmas Advent stitch along. That sound like fun? 
So let me know if you have any questions. I'm not sure how coherent that was with me crawling around and waving linen around, <laughs> but that is something I am very excited about. Um, okay, other very excited stuff. I have finishes. I have fully finishes, fully finished objects. I got shit done. <laughs> GSD 2021, and that's something Mike was saying. GSD 2021 in the house, too. Get the painting done, get the stuff we need, get it set up so we can just sit back, like within the first six months, get everything done that we want to get done so we can just sit back and enjoy our life here. So GSD 2021 is happening all over the place, but also with my projects. I'm so excited. I'm going to show you this one first. Excuse my reach. I probably just appeared really big in the camera. So we're going to start with a knitting project. This is Caramelized Cowl by Laura Nelkin. And it is gorgeous in every way. It has beads. It has my hair stuck to it. It has gorgeous textural stitches. Now, I had started this. This was, she has a, a club called the N Club, the Nelkin Club, that comes out with um, three, I think it, now it's three patterns a year. I was a member of that for a number of years up until, I think we moved to Hawaii, up until 2018. And I started this. This is one of the patterns from that. I started this in June of 2018, and I got it all done up to this edging, the finished edging on the pattern. It got put away because of a move to Hawaii. And then of course, once I was in Hawaii, I really didn't feel interested in <laughs> knitting something like this or knitting much of anything, actually. Um, so when I was pulling out my all my stuff over there in my knitting room, the project bags and all of that, I was looking in all the project bags and I saw this, I'm like, I'm sure I was almost done with this, and I was. So I pulled it out and I've been working on it for the past week, a half hour every day. I might have missed a day once, maybe twice, but just a half hour and I got it done. So this is the Caramelized Cow by Laura Nelkin. And if you are interested in it, I will. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a fingering weight, just a beautiful singles yarn with a gorgeous beads. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous design. And it feels so good. The yarn is a singles um, that's super soft. I don't remember the name of it now. Um, but I will link the pattern. And if you're interested in her end club, getting a kit from her three times a year, a kit that includes a yarn that has been specially curated just for her club colored dyed everything just it's exclusive to her club anything that she designs so it's not like you can go out and find this yarn just in a store someplace and then there's of course the pattern and all kinds of other goodies laura's clubs are fantastic she has another one called lola's choice which is for smaller things like um, accessories like she does jewelry, beaded jewelry, beaded mitts. I mean, it's all just fantastic. Um, so yeah, finish this. And all those frames that I got, I started to use them. Now, some of these are not, none of them are really finished in the back. Some of them are not even secured in the back because I don't have the little things. Those are on order. This is the Dorothy Allen sampler from Crown and Thistle, otherwise known as R&R as &R, &R Reproductions. So this was a kit that I got. It was actually part of a box of things that I got that somebody gave to me. Um, it was partially done. She was no longer stitching and she gifted a lot of her things to me because she knew that they would be appreciated. So she had started this. This is, I think, a Vera Swa silk. And I don't remember the linen count, but it's either a 36 or a 40. This is one of the frames that I got at the thrift store here. And I just, it's just perfect for this. So that is, 
And this is still available, I think, from Dying to Stitch in Virginia Beach. I, I believe you can still get the pattern. So that is one of my finishes. I'm not sure where to put it since it's not secure in the back. My Louise and Henry for my knitting room, my sheep wall. So just a totally simple finish, right? I had had this clip-on frame. I think I got this in Hawaii somewhere. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got it at the Ben Franklin's in Hawaii. So I just mounted Miss Louise and Mr. Henry on some mounting board and put it on there. Nothing. I was thinking about maybe, I have all my knitting swatches and I never know what to do with them, but I don't want to throw them away. I was thinking of maybe putting them on here as a background, but I kind of like that diamond background for this. Just simple. Let the pattern stand out. So that is done. This is another one that is not secured on the back. This is mine, friend to all. And I knew when I took the pictures of this piece with this frame, that this frame was meant for this piece. Absolutely love it in this frame. So yeah, I'm getting the little, the little turn thingies to hold your back in place. And then that'll be done. I have to put a hanger on it. It doesn't have a hanger thingy. And that'll be done and it'll go up on the wall here. So I, you, I don't have anything on this wall yet. Um, do you remember that box thing that I had? That kind of cubby thing that I had behind me in the videos in the RV? I have that that I want to hang up here somewhere. I'm not sure whether to put it in the center of the wall and like hang stuff around it or to put it here in the corner and hang stuff. But anyways, I have to get that worked out. And then all this stuff will go up on the wall. Last but not least, Bayun Cat. This is a frame that I got at the Goodwill in Hawaii, in Wahiwa. And it's been waiting and waiting and thinking, what in the world is going to go in this frame? Bayun Cat is perfect. Perfect in this frame. So, yeah. That doesn't, ha ha doesn't have a hanger on it either. So little things have to be done before they're ready to go up on the wall. But I'm making progress with my, with all of my projects that have been unframed. So that's exciting. All right, so on to what I'm working on now. So I'm gonna start with my latest design now. I have a friend who is kind of a business consultant for artists and creators. Sorry if I'm going out of seat, out of frame there. I need to get this board. Um, and she mentioned to me in my videos that she doesn't think I do a good enough job of separating out from everything I'm doing my own design. So I'm going to try and get better at that and make a big deal about it. I'm not very good at that, <laughs> but I'm going to try and be better. Seasons in lace, fall. So I'm going to start each of these sections with stuff that's mine, basically. I didn't start the other section with the stuff that's mine, but I have some work to do. Anyway, seasons in lace, fall. Not as much progress as I was hoping, but so many other things I'm working on. Um, one of which I can't show you, but it is, let me just give you a little hint and say, um, everything cross stitch has subscription boxes. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I know that now. I am still aiming to have the stitching done on this by the end of November. I am not sure that will happen. So this is the NPI floss. I am stitching this on vintage, um, what is it, Vintage Country Mocha 36 count using two strands of the NPI. And I have to say, I think this looks so rich and so scrumptious. So this is the big middle border. I have the other one sitting out here. And it's, you know, it's not like I'm going to be able to show these all together, right? But... 
This will be, let's see. This is summer in the purples. And so to give you an idea, like I said, this is the middle border. Of course, it's not the, the big mandala in the bottom corner. But to give you an idea of how the colors might work together, I don't have enough fingers for this. So golds are opposite purples. Well, blue is opposite yellow, so you have the golds and the purples that are kind of opposite as well on the color wheel, and they're a good complement for each other. And this is just going to be scrumptious together. So fall, summer, spring, and winter. My plan, since I am doing them all in separate color, separate pieces of fabric, my plan is to sew them together. I'm not gonna try and get them to match up perfectly. I think that would drive me insane. So I'll probably have like a, a square, you know, two linen threads separating them or four, two on each piece, um, so that you have the illusion of them all coming together with that center mandala, but without the frustration of me trying to actually get everything to match up. All right, this is next, because it's right here, and it's so gosh darn cute. So I mentioned that I was going to be mentioning my friend Becky again. <clears throat> Becky is working on, I just think this is, this is just so awesome. So her parents gave her a miniature dollhouse in 1978. She recently retired and she started putting it together. And it's something I, I looked up on, on Instagram. I don't remember. It's something about Williamsburg. I guess there's a line of dollhouses. Um, she started putting it together and she showed pictures on Facebook. And I was like, those walls are awfully empty, Becky. You need a sampler. And um, a, a mutual, another mutual friend of ours was like, Jan, you need to stitch her a sampler for those walls. I'm like, oh my God, that would be so adorable. So this is the start of that. I am using a band sampler by Long Dog Samplers that was published in, <coughs> excuse me, the Gift of Stitching magazine, <clears throat> I am losing my voice and I haven't even been talking very long. <clears throat> Hold please. Right. So I'm using a band sampler by Long Dog Samplers that was published in the Gift of Stitching magazine, I think in January through April, April 2007. And this is what the whole sampler looks like and I'm just picking out pieces. So I did the center flower down at the bottom with the smaller bits around it. I'm currently working on this center um, flower pot. I have not decided yet whether I'm going to put the mice in. I don't think I'm gonna put the date. And then I think I'm gonna end with, um, with probably this heart border here. It should only be like two inches by three inches at the most, and even this might be kind of big. So we'll see, but anyway. This is um, 36 count linen. I'm stitching it over one just with a tent stitch. I am using, um, I can't reach the bag. I'm using a variety of thread picker silks. Just kind of things that, her, her colors in her house are, in her miniature house, 
are turquoises and pinks. So I'm just kind of finding colors that I think will work. So that is just so much fun to work on. I was like, oh, can I please do you a little miniature sampler? All right, next, let me find the next pattern I want to talk to you about. So this is the one that I mentioned that made me decide that I needed to do Black Sampler November. This is Fox and Rabbits. What is it? Black Pomegranate? Pomegranate Sampler. Isn't that awesome? Oh my God. Karen of Fox and Rabbit is stitching this and she showed her, um, she showed her progress and it's she has some cottage garden threads that she's using and the grays and black and in gray and black and the two together i mean it just it just makes a delicious delicious piece i'm having trouble figuring out where i need to be on the screen so that portion at the top and then the alphabet is just i mean so yeah, I saw that and went, all right, sign me. Well, no, I didn't say it immediately. I messaged Rose Heck and said, I'm falling hard. And she said, don't Jan, you don't have time for this. I bought the pattern. I'm not buying it. I'm going to pick out some floss. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So this linen is 40 count frozen by Forbidden Fiber Company. This was um, the fabric that came in the Gilmore Girls um, box that I bought from them. The floss is, they're both Country Cottage, or they're both classic color works. The gray is Plymouth Rock, and the it's actually a very dark brown, it's not black, and that is black coffee. So it's a combination, it's kind of like a 3371 brown with that variegated and I don't know whether it's coming through in the video but it's scrumptious it is um, the variegation just adds a depth there isn't as much variegation in the dark of course but the variegation of the gray just adds a depth that frankly I can't get enough of <laughs> and this pattern is just I think I found the perfect marriage of fabric and floss and pattern and I am loving it so that is my black sampler November I'm trying to get a little bit in on this every day but um, most days I'm running out of time because I am still bound and determined to get hoity-toity done So this bottom border is just about killing me. And you can see, I don't have too much further to go. I'm at 75% done now. Boy, you have to do a lot of stitches to get that percent to even go up 1%. <laughs> this is such a big design. And to make matters worse, the other night, and I don't know whether I'm gonna be able to remember, I think it was over here. I was one stitch off in this area, like over here, I was one stitch too far this way because I had put I had put four spaces in here this where it's three at the top I had had four so it shoved everything this way and I didn't realize it until I had all of this done and was over here and I think I was coming down here and I had already had some of this done and it wasn't lining up like it was supposed to I was at like 320 stitches done for that day it was Sunday so you know I try and get a lot in Sundays I was at 320 stitches stitched and by the time I ripped out I was back to only 45 stitches stitched for that day now I did get back up to like 120 before bedtime but so Sunday, I mentioned Becky and her husband are coming over for dinner. Um, I'm not going to get much stitching in, therefore, on Sunday as much as I would like. 
And then next weekend we go to to Jackson. Now we'll be back, we'll be coming back on Sunday. So I might still be able to get a bunch in, but I am getting about 200, 250 in every evening. Um, so it's not like I'm not making progress, but now I'm starting to think if I don't manage to get this done by the end of the year, am I gonna change that date? I'm thinking not because that means I'd have to totally undo all of that. I may just have to live with the lie <laughs> that I didn't actually get it finished in 21. <laughs> if I don't get it finished in 21, it's going to be very shortly into 22 that I'm getting it done. So there is that. The other thing I'm working on, so I finished, um, so I haven't blocked my Ruana, Wilson Ruana yet by my friend Kat, Kitty B Knits, Kitty B Knitting. I did get this done and I did get this blocked yesterday. Um, but because I finished the Wilson Ruana, because I finished that other, the Knights That Say Knit shawl, because I finished this, I felt I was due a new start. Although Rose and I are going to be starting something new pretty soon as well, but that's that's not till the beginning of the year. Kat came out with a new sweater pattern that um, I jumped right on board with. Let me find a picture of it for you. It is called the Abbey Pullover. She knit it in cotton. I will be knitting it in merino. There's Kat, isn't she gorgeous? She is the most gorgeous woman and a beautifully snarky woman. God, I love her. We hit it off so well. So she knitted in cotton, meant to be more of a beach pullover. I will be knitting it in wool, meant to be more of a winter pullover, but super simple. Just, just stocking it and reverse some rows of reverse stocking it. Um, drop shoulders, so not a whole lot of shaping in the shoulders. Just perfect for me at this point in time. I wanted to actually get it started and going because um, this will be a good thing. Whoops, I just shook you all around when I put my iPad down. Um, this will be a good, easy project to knit on on the trip to and back from Jackson because I do knitting in the car. So I've been working on my swatch. That is this. Swatching both the ribbing and the stockinette body, two different needle sizes. So I have about another 13 rows of the stockinette to do before it'll be ready to be washed. Wash, wet block your swatches if you want accurate gauge. Gauge is important in knitting. I am using the yarn with a sticker over it. It's called Trenzato. Let me see if I can find one without a sticker. No. This was all clearance yarn at a good yarn that I got when I worked there. Um, isn't that go a gorgeous color? <laughs> what do you think? I'm not much into pinks, but I think that'll work, huh? Um, it's a DK weight, 100%. Is it 100% merino? One ply of merino and one ply of superwash merino. So, what do you think? I hope I'm not always out of the uh, out of the frame of the camera since this is a new setup. I can't see quite as well in the frame. So, as long as you can see my stuff, though, that's what's important. Okay, so that's a start with my knitting. Um, let me go back to my notes. I have a video for you of my progress on the room organization. I have one for the knitting room and what I've done for the, in this room. I'm gonna tag those onto the end. Um, and now I think goodies is in order. First and foremost, many thanks to my friend Anne. Anne is my good friend from Oh, way back in college time, we went to Pitt together. 
she got me a couple of Misty's patterns, Luminous Fiber Arts. Comfort and Joy, which is so sweet. And um, this one is just perfect. Another one for my sheep wall, even if it is Christmas, fleece on earth. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Anne. I appreciate you. Let's see. Then, I'll go back to Dropbox. So, all my digital patterns. Okay, so I got the, um, the Advent Calendar one. And it was, it was so funny. So, Marula is the name of the designer. I messaged her on Etsy to let her know that um, we were going to be doing a sow for this pattern and that, you know, to that explains kind of the jump she is probably seeing in her pattern sales. <laughs> she wrote back and she said, oh, this was a leap in pattern sales. <laughs> she wanted to thank me. And so she wanted me to pick, she either wanted to refund the cost of the advent pattern or let me pick another one. So I did pick another one. This is called Spring in the City. Primavera in Chitta. Isn't that gorgeous? I adore this. Ah, oh, thank you, Marula. And then I'm sure the sales continued because she sent me a 10% off coupon this morning. <laughs> and I'm sure the sales are going to continue even more after this. So, um, again, the Advent one. Oh, this is so cute. She's an amazing designer. So that's the Advent one again with that gorgeous panel on the bottom. And I'm thinking for the panel on the bottom, what I might do is, you know, I'll do it separately again and see if I can mount it on something that, you know, has some kind of stick that I can use it as kind of a tree topper. I don't know whether I'll be able to do that or not, but um, I just made it bigger. So I don't know how well you can see. Isn't that adorable? All these motifs are just wonderful. And then that bottom. So anyways, I'm thinking the day after American Thanksgiving, so November 26th. So that's that goodie. Um, let's see. I don't know that I got any other digital patterns to show you. I do have a few other goodies down here, so I'm going to reach down and I'll pop right back. <clears throat> All right, so um, I talked with Kimberly Jolly oh, last weekend. She was she was in San Antonio. And she wrote me email or texted me to say a year ago, we were getting together and meeting for the first time in San Antonio. I don't know where time goes, it flies. But anyways, we were chatting and she let me know because I am so out of touch with things, um, with the move and everything, that Pat Carson was discontinuing the production of her needles. Kimberly knew they were out of size 28, but she sent me some size 26s so that I would have some more of those because I'd, I'd gotten some of the 28s not too long ago from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, so thank you, Kimberly. Um, I got the next packet in the Lady Dots Creates Club from Annie, Crazy Annie's on Facebook. I did not re-sign up for 2022. Um, thought long and hard about it, but decided that um, I need to settle in a little bit more and figure out what I have. Because at this point, I just feel a little overwhelmed with everything that's over there in that room that I have to organize. But And she also said, I was tempted because um, she said they were changing up the what they were sending in the club a little bit. And so I was tempted to see it, but I just decided not to. This is the December, and I think it's great. Really pretty fabric with the stars. 
four different types of trims. In each packet, there is a set of pins. So this one has these gold needles and then a little like teardrop crystal one. And then this cute little button, it's so cute. So I think that's my last for the, um, the Lady Dot Creates Club from Crazy Annie's. She is full for the 2022 club now. So that's going down there. I have a card here. Oh, that was for some stuff from um, for the holiday gift extravaganza. So, I don't think, oh, that's what's in this package. I have been getting so many great things. Oh, this is the whole set of the Stitchy Stars. Again, Lori Holt, Fat Quarter Shop. So, the pattern, the floss, and the fabric. That's one of the giveaways. Um, I've been getting so many things from people. Lots of individuals sending me um, patterns to give away and not just like old stuff from the 80s that's like oh what do we do with this but some newer stuff and let me just say <laughs> so I gotta I don't have them where I can reach them I don't think um oh there they are right in front of me so this is from Michelle Maine Moose Mom <clears throat> in um Maine Moose Mama in on Instagram so she sent me a packet a package of patterns, a bunch of Plum Street, mostly Plum Street, but also one Rovaris. And they are all with the wiener dog patterns from Plum Street. So I have to ask Michelle, I don't think I knew this about you. Are you a wiener dog mama? Because you had all the patterns and now I have all the patterns. <laughs> jeans and weenies I mean oh my god it almost be worth just to just to post it because it's so funny spring rolls I mean Paulette did an amazing job with these patterns so that is going to be I don't know yet whether I'm going to give those all away as one or a bunch of separate ones thank you Michelle thank you Dawn I have more and I have um I have something, some fabric coming from Treehouse Fibers um, and Legacy, is that right? Legacy Fiber Arts. They have just started selling fabric and kits with their fabric. So um, I reached out to see if they'd be interested in um, sending some fabric to me and I can promote their business. I'm getting something from Wilst Iris Snaps. I'm getting, I just reached out to Karen this morning from Fox and Rabbit to see if I, if she'd be interested. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going to be fantastic. Plus, I have the stuff that I keep getting in from Fat Quarter Shop. So they sent me this set of thread drops. They sent me this set of square quilt pattern templates. this quilt pattern. And this Rose in Bloom quilt book. So all of that will be part of the giveaway as well as other stuff that they that they've sent me before that um, I've been saving as well as things from other people that I've been saving. Now, one thing that is not going to be a giveaway <clears throat> but that I, I do want to sell um, is the latest kit from the Circle of Friends kit from Silver Needle. This is the hands-on design one. And while it's cute, I don't see myself ever doing it. So it's basically you're stitching the little pieces and, and making them into hexagons and stitching them onto a little pillow. And all of the all of the fabric is in here, as well as um, the pattern 
and the floss is in here. <clears throat> There's a little thread drop card. My voice is really not happy today. It's not like I've been talking a lot before this. And it also, you know, every in every one of these kits, Silver Needle includes a little goodie. And um, apparently they live not too far from the Pioneer Woman, I don't know, gift shop, home, whatever it is that she has. And so they included in this packet a, um, this is a little, little linen tea towel, I don't know whether it's linen, actually cotton, that is from the Pioneer Woman. Um, I'm not a cowgirl. <laughs> so if anybody is interested in this, I don't know. I didn't think ahead to figure out a price for this. Um, and I don't know how much I paid for it. Um, but we can work on that. Let me know if you're interested and, and I'll let you know. If it's going to be probably less than what I paid for it. But um, I don't know. If you're interested, let me know and we'll talk. Okay. So holiday gift extravaganza. Oh, something else I wanted to share with you that I ordered. Um, something that you may not know about me is that, and, and Mike as well, is that we love handmade pottery. <clears throat> so any place we go, when we travel someplace that has some like cool handmade pottery shops, we always go in and buy something. And um, I have a friend who, from my digital scrapbooking days, who is doing, she, she hasn't been doing it long, but is doing amazing work with hand-thrown, hand-glazed pottery, coming up with her own glazes. They're just gorgeous. She posted, I think it was on Facebook, I saw the post, that she is teaming up. She's in Las Cruces, New Mexico. She is teaming up with the New Mexico Tea Company with a tea advent calendar. So she has made a mug and um, so the advent calendar includes the mug and a different sample of tea for every day in December up until the 25th. I ordered a second mug because I couldn't let just one of us have a mug. So that comes like at the end of November and I can't wait to see that. I will link all that below so you can check, check out if you're into tea or want to discover new teas. Mike and I haven't been into fancy tea as much and we're starting to get into it now and the loose leaf tea. Um, and so I'm excited to see what we get with that advent calendar. So that is coming at the end of the month. All right, holiday gift extravaganza, and then I think I'm done. Um, I'm on target. I haven't actually done any organizing of it yet, but um, day after Thanksgiving, it starts. It is not too late. I'm getting, I still have some project bags that need to get here from a couple different project bag makers. Um, if you have a business and want me to promote your business, I'd be happy to if you want to send a giveaway. Um, or if you're just an individual who, not just an individual, you know what I mean, um, who maybe has some goodies that you'd like to share with the greater cross-stitch community, please send them my way. Um, I will also say I'm starting to get a little nervous <laughs> about how much postage is going to be. Um, so if you would like to donate to the buy me a coffee thing, <laughs> I would be open to that as well to help out with postage. Um, I don't think I'll be doing a floss tube until after I get back from Jackson next weekend. Um, but I will be doing a video at some point next week to reveal what Maria Kutzner and I have been working on. Um, we kind of had a, a bit of a falter in the middle of it because, you know, this move thing <laughs> kind of. I, I couldn't handle any more. So it kind of delayed it more than we wanted it to, but we've come up with an alternative that I'm hoping I'll be able to reveal to you next week. And I'm very excited about that. And I hope you guys love it as much as Marie and I do. Um, so look for that from me next week. Um, also next week, I have a review to do. A company sent me a light, the Ben Q Genie lamp to review. 
and it is awesome. I've been using it for a couple weeks now. It's up in my stitching spot upstairs. So um, I will show you that hopefully next week as well. And um, then once we get the painting done, at least the main area painting done, tomorrow I hope to get some things on the wall again before Becky and her husband come over. And um, I'll show you that if we actually get that done. Um, so yeah, lots on my plate, lots of exciting things happening. I also have an idea brewing in the back of my head for kind of a private club, which will happen through buy me a coffee tied in with discord. So kind of like weekly meetings, weekly chat sessions, stitch alongs as a membership of this club. But, um, I have to get a couple things off of my plate before I can concentrate on that fully. But I'm hoping come December that I'll be able to have that ready to, to talk to you about. All right. I think that is everything. If it is not everything, that's too bad. <laughs> because I'm done. All right. So I'm going to put the videos in first. Um for my tours of that room and this room, so stay tuned for that now. So first we're gonna start with my yarn knitting workroom. It's still a bit of a mess, more than a bit, but it's getting there. I have things ordered. In fact, I have a work table coming today that will go right over here, which will be where I do any cutting and mailing and all that kind of stuff. I have a full-size ironing board coming at some point. Um, it seems to be delayed in delivery. And once these things come, especially this work table, which has drawers, a lot of this other stuff will get put away. But I do have my desk in here. This is the desk I had up in the loft in Hawaii. Um, as you can see, it houses my sewing machine and various and sundry knitting and other detritus. This will be my actual work design table with a nice view of a very foggy day out the front window. We do have some workmen here today. They are, our cable service was degraded, I guess. They have to lay a new cable, but anyway. So, my work desk, I still haven't hung anything on the walls in here. Eventually that poor little blue thing will be straightened up. My grandma. It's my mother's mother, me and my honey. One of my little boys who is not so little anymore. So let's see what we have here. So yesterday I was, I have the cutting mat under here because yesterday I was finishing some things and I will be showing you those in a bit. And I have a pile of stuff here that I need to finish. So this is, I should have looked this up, I know this. You know this, Summer by, ah, Summer House Stitch Works, is that right? I have Spring done, so I have Summer here. I don't have the other two done. This is my filigree in rows. I do have, I don't know whether you can see that, I do have a liner on that. Um, I'm gonna make this into a pillow. It's gonna be a fairly big pillow, but um, I don't wanna frame it. I wanna, I wanna make it into a pillow, so I have, Pulled some fabric out here, but I haven't gone through it yet. This little Christmas ornament that I did last year, um, I have to get finished. I don't think I, I didn't iron any interfacing on that yet. This is the Lizzie Kate piece, the best and most beautiful things that I am going to cut down. I'm gonna actually take out the stitching up here and over here, although I am tempted to do this green all around it and make this portion into a pillow. This, now we're getting into some old, old things that I found in a bin. So most of these, I don't remember anything about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a Sue Lentz, cause I had a lot of her kits. Both of these are Sue Lentz, um, but I don't really remember much about it at all. This, um, I may frame, I don't know. 
haven't thought about it. This I will make into a pillow. This is over one on probably 20 count hard anger by the looks of it, or 22 count hard anger, I mean. This, I don't know what I'll do with this. I hate to throw it away because it was a lot of stitching. I started the um, Amish series as separate pieces as it has them in the magazine. I think I mentioned this before. And when I saw it in my cross stitch store, the stitching post in Catonsville, Maryland, a gentleman had done it on um, over one on 22 count or and all as one piece and it was stunning. So I'd gotten this much done when I saw it and I had to start over again. So, but I hate to throw this away. It, it's in desperate need of a cleaning. Actually, my completed piece is in desperate need of a cleaning too. I'm gonna have to unframe it and do that and get it reframed. But yeah, I don't know what to do with this. I don't wanna throw it away. Any ideas? Let me know. Same with these two. So I believe I took classes for these way, way back in the late 80s. I don't remember where. Um, counted canvas work, absolutely love it. Actually, this might be actual needlepoint. This might have had the design painted on it. I don't remember. But anyways, I would love to get these actually finished, finally. Um, if you know somebody, like I don't know whether Jan at the Keepsakes, at Keepsakes does this kind of finishing with with the canvas. Um, so if you know that fact, let me know. Or if you know somebody who does a great job finishing this kind of canvas work, let me know because I, I'm not going to attempt to finish them myself. I am sure the reason that they are not finished is because I thought I would do it myself. That little one looks a little bit weak there. Um, but, you know, never did it because it intimidated me, the thought of doing this. I'm just giving you a up-close view of the stitches. But this needs to be finished. These need to be finished and um, displayed somewhere. So if you know somebody that could finish this as a stocking, let me know. The other thing I wanted to show you here is this box. Now this is the Flossen store from Fat Quarter Shop. Again, they sent this to me as a review piece. Um, it is a Lori Holt item, I believe. And it is meant to store your Arafil. It would also be perfect to store your Sulky. So it is an, a drawer that pulls out. Excuse me, I have half the burps. So I do have one Sulky in here. Um, the rest of these are the Arafil flosses from the Prim Stitch um, series. So as you can see, I, I had been wondering what to do with those. I've had them in the box all this time. Um, and this came in the mail and it's like, okay, that is perfect. The other things I have in here are just little notions that end up getting put in strange places. Little um, odds and ends of yarn that I don't throw away because um, it makes good, uh, what's the word you're looking for, Jan? I'm gonna have trouble with words again in this video. It makes a good um, lifeline or to put your to put your stitches on whenever you're you know, a holder. Underneath here, I have all these little clips. Spool holders here, tags, all those little magnetic things I got, some tape measures, some other pins, some more stitch markers, so just all kinds of odds and ends that um, have a tendency to end up in weird places for me. So this is going to stay here on my desk so it's in easy reach because it is a drawer with a little handle and it's nice and heavy. So even though I have this packed pretty full and if anybody, any of you have these magnets, you know that those are pretty heavy. But this box, I'm having a problems opening it, opening it because of what's around it. Um, this box is, is sturdy and so it can handle the weight and as you can see, it has little 
like rubber silicone feet on it, so it's kind of sticking to the desk a bit. So when I open and close it, it doesn't shift around for some reason. So those little tags are catching, so that's why it's, I'm having trouble opening it. So I need to push those down so they don't catch. So, love that. I will hopefully remember to link that below. So yeah, all this stuff is just kind of piled up here waiting for me. Now, obviously the rest of this is not organized. I have to clear this space out so I can build my desk there. But I do have my closet pretty much, pretty much put together. Um, so on top here, well, let me start here because I love these things and I've had them for years. These are my needle holders. So I have a circular needle holder and this is from a place on Etsy, a shop on Etsy called Buttermilk Cottage. Um, and again, I will link them. Hopefully I will remember. Um, so this, ha it just came with, as you can see, without the numbers on it, but it has these kind of openings that you can slide your circular needles through and I wrote in Sharpie the numbers so that I would know you know what size is in which slot and this is just it's a great way for me to store my circulars so they're not kept in a bag and kept all twisted up so it keeps them it, it lets them hang freely keeps the cables nice and neat. You can see this one was put in a bag somewhere and it's so this is, these are actually a pair of signatures um, that I need to take off of their cable. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had this for years and I love this way of storing my circulars. Now what is hanging on the back is from the same Etsy shop, Buttermilk Cottage, but it's how I store my interchangeable circular needles. So you can see these are all the tips. Again, a bunch of pockets, some smaller, some bigger. And I wrote the numbers on them, so the tips rest here. I keep them here in these pockets. And then I have the cables, and actually speaking of being all twisted up, I have the cables in this holder. And the size, the length of the cable is written in Sharpie on the plastic. So that is 24, 32, 40, 47, and 60. And that's the size with the tips on, not just of the cable. So again, this is how I've been storing my needles for years, and I love it. And I just have it hanging on this hanger that I have that has, it's meant for like um, tank tops that you wanna hang so that they don't slide off the hanger, but I use it in my craft room. So up here I have other project bags. These all have projects in them that have been started, except for this. This is actually a sweater kit that I got that I haven't started yet. Um, up there is just some mailers and a tote that I used in the RV to store stuff. So these are all projects that I'd like to get to in the not too distant future. They are sitting up there waiting for me. In these cubes, I got these cube shelves these two are just piles of pretty fingering yarn that I thought was too pretty that I, I want to be able to see and, and pet periodically <laughs> because that's what we do. Down here in the next cube, I have kits that I have bought. Um, most of them have patterns that go with them. Not all of them do. Like this is a um, Sweet Georgia party of five. I don't have any pattern for that. Um, I think I might have a pattern for that, but there's hat patterns. There's um, Laura Nelkin's nugget patterns. I have a couple of those to knit. Um, just little footies with beads around the ankle. Um, I have this gorgeous fingerless mitt set. I got that at Rhinebeck a few years ago. Isn't that pretty? Oh, look, teal. What a surprise. Um, another Laura Nelkin little kit. Umami knit mitts, so that's more fingerless mitts. 
a kit that I got from her from one of her clubs. I will be talking more about that later. In this cubby, I have sweater amounts of yarn. Most of these are designated for certain sweaters. I just haven't started them yet. There's another pile sitting there that I thought I was going to use for something and change my mind. This little cubby here is where I have my, um, my fat quarters of fabric. I'm actually gonna look for some different way to store these because this isn't very convenient. Here's another cubby with project bags. Down there is just all my mailing stuff, getting ready for the holiday gift extravaganza because I'm gonna have a lot to mail. The bottom one has all of my old beading stuff, all of my seed beads and various and sundry other beads and findings. And you can see I have piles of fabric here because it's uncomfortable to, or not convenient to have them there. In the middle here, I put in this metal rack. This rack was actually in our kitchen in our apartment in Hawaii. Um, we don't have a need for it here. So um, there was a lot of unused space in this area, this center area, and going up to the high part. So using this, I do lose a little bit of space back in there, but of course this makes up for it. That big bag at the top holds my Persian Dreams blanket, which I will get back to someday. And then more yarn. We have a couple project bags. Those ones ha happen to be empty, but they're so pretty I thought I'd leave them sitting out. Some flowers that I use to decorate some of my projects. There's a shelf of giveaways right there. This is two of the 2022 planners from Fat Quarter Shop. All kinds of stuff back in there. More project bags, just some random tissue paper that I don't want to throw away in case I need it. I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that. Then we have more bins of yarn more bins of yarn on the shelf we have the the um wrap that i have the knights at saint knee shawl that i have to um block a couple more different kits back there and then this interesting thing i'm going to pull this out and hang this down here where hopefully we can see it so lisa buick sent me these a uh, bunch of these um curtain ring, curtain, shower curtain holder rings. <laughs> Did that make sense at all? She had been using them to try and sort her floss and store her bags of floss on, just on the clips. She wasn't real happy with it. She sent me some to see if it would work for me on my new stands in my other room. I don't think it's going to work for me for that, but I had the idea to see if it would work to hold my um, my trims on. So I have started to put some of them on. It's a little bit fussy to get them to clip on, so I'm not sure if this will work or not. I have to play with other ways of getting them clipped on. But then I'm, again, I have another one of these hangers that I will use to hang them on. I have buried under here all of these trims that I need to figure out. That, so these are all ones that are not on spools, right? I got this from Joann's one time. I looked at that and said, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> and it came home with me and there it sat. So I wanna sort all these and get them into a little bit better organization. And I'm hoping that this will work. Okay, I think that is all for this room for now. So we are going to go over to the other room and I will show you what I've done there. All righty, so. The main thing that has changed over here is I would say the decorating. I have started to hang things. So whoops, let's get away so you don't have the glare of the overhead light. So you remember the fractal bookmark over one on 28 that was hanging in the RV and that is now hanging here. This is a bell pull that I did ages and ages ago. This again is another Sue Lens project. It needs an ironing very badly so I need to get to that. Remember my closet, I have all of my fabric hung up now. I still have kind of a mess down below 
Um, I have some things that I'm working on framing that I found frames for. I just need to get framed. I have a stack of finished things there that I have to figure out how to frame. And unused project bags here. And then a mess down here. There's some frames that I got and a pile of little pieces of linen that I have to get some kind of storage for. I got little tags, these little keychain tags. I put these on my rack, but I also got these, because I don't have enough of these, um, to do the numbering on, on my rack. Um, I also got these small rings. And this is, I have a hole, you can see the bag down there on the floor. This is gonna work much better, both for this rack, as well as the DMC rack. So slowly over time, I will get all of these bags transferred onto the rings, and then the rings just hang on the, on the different posts, um, and that'll make it much easier, much easier to get to. You remember, sorry for the shadow from the overhead light, you remember shades of gold and my Grace Quaker sampler. I am going to get these to the framer fairly soon. Those are next on the list. I have a basket here. This is a actually a fabric basket that I got at a little thrift store in Hawaii, in Wahiwa. And I have a bunch of pillows. And the Just Another Button pin club pins from Fat Quarter Shop stuck. Proliferous, proliferously in my pillows. That's another one that's going to get framed soon. And this one here, although I'm not too sure about that one. Around to the other side of the room, I got the second rack. I haven't organized these yet into like designers or anything like that, but I'm loving this. I think this is perfect. Above that, I hung my... Um, this is an old one. So this is Quilter's Cottage by um, Fat Quarter Shop by Lori Holt. I did rework the colors of this to be more coordinated with this. This is an old one from I think 88. The designer has a very uh, Norwegian name, Scandinavian name, Lindquist. I don't remember now, it was actually um, totally different colors. It was mint greens and apricots, totally 80 colors. So what I did is went on Pinterest and found a quilt, a star quilt. I just searched on star quilt and found one that I liked and pulled the colors from that to totally redo the colors on this one. And those are hanging together there. There's my Amish scene. I don't know whether you can tell, but there's some staining, some discoloration going on up here. And I did have this professionally framed, but this again is from the late 80s, early 90s when I finished this. And um, so I think I'm gonna try and take it all out of the frame, give it a good washing. It is all DMC, so it should wash fine, and then take it to be framed again. It's, it's getting kind of old and beat up. So one of you asked me to kind of go over what I have on my little shelf here. For inspiration, I just have so many odds and ends. So, um, and I'm going to apologize for not remembering the names of everything. Um, my brain just doesn't work that well at this point to remember the names of everything I stitched, but I'm sure you all recognize that. Um, that is a Brenda Gervais pattern. I have some, just some old pearl cotton here. These two pieces and actually another one here I'm thinking I have another one someplace else, but I'm not seeing it. Um, I got these in Agra in India. They are mimics of the type of inlaid work that you see on the Taj Mahal. So those always have a pride of place in my, in my displays because I just, of course, the Taj Mahal is beautiful. I have all kinds of Indian things just scattered through here. This is a little paper mache box from India. That bathing beauty is my mother. Isn't she cute? 
just, you know, jars with odds and ends, seashells. Um, if you remember those two powder um, compacts I got from somebody in San Antonio, I will reproduce, do something with those at some point. All these little things of pearl cotton were my grandmother's. Um, my grandmother used to crochet edges around washcloths and guest towels and, and give them to us as presents. Um, it, it's not something you ever see anymore, but it, it's just, I keep those out to remind me of those little special touches that that people used to do that make things interesting. This is a little Just Nan button, or Just Nan pillow that I did. The pin cup cushions down here are old ones that were my grandmother's. Um, my maternal grandmother, the one who did the sewing around the um, washcloths with my paternal grandmother. And again, just all kinds of little odds and ends stuck in here little bowls and this is a little weaving that I did um, bead tray I mean just all kinds of strange odds and ends over here we have a couple of um, we uh, spinning spindles a pretty little box that I got all my scissors and scissor fobs are shoved in there with uh, all kinds of different old needle packs um, goodness hello Kim this is laying out because I need to put the, this is the, what I put, kept my sewing box sampler silks in and I need to put them away. So that's laying out to remind me to do that. I have the peacock antimacassar here on my dresser as I want to keep that out where I can see it. I don't have the side pieces out. I just have that piece out because I think that's too pretty to put away. I have these pieces out because I need to get these framed yet, so I was doing some measuring. This is my sewing box sampler rolled up that I need to get to the framer. That's my first punch needle. That is from the old tattered flag. There is the um, Be Strong. No, Strong. Oh, see, I don't remember anything. Oh, my God. Strong. Stay strong. Be strong. <laughs> from Fat Quarter Shop. That was their stitch along earlier this year. My thankful design. That was the first Cosmo design that I did with Fat Quarter Shop. And there is my spring piece that the summer one's over there that I have to finish. Pansy Walk by Shepherd's Bush. Again, did this ages and ages and ages ago, and it needs to be ironed. This, I believe, was a kit, but I believe it was a, the silver lining designer that did it. I stitched this for my mother ages and ages ago. Um, it had an old desiccated butterfly on it that actually came with the kit. I reframed it not too long ago um, to keep here with me. Live Simply. You wouldn't know that by all this stuff. This is a little weaving I did. I've done a little weaving in my life, a very little, like these three things that are here. Um, one of which is hiding underneath there. I wanted to see what it was like to incorporate different media in the weaving. My good friend, Laura Arena at A Good Yarn in Sarasota is the one that kind of coached me through this because she is a master weaver as well as a master spinner. Here's another little fabric basket that I got off of Etsy, which I absolutely love. I think the company for that is Wexford Treasures. This little quilt was a gift that I keep out. In the basket is all of the little paper crafting books, memory books that I've made over the years. Oh, my um memorial things for my parents and my brother. For some reason that stays out. And these are just a bunch of cards that I made using digital scrapbooking papers back when I was doing that. Stamping. All kinds of, this is like my history of crafting here in this basket actually. It just stays out as a reminder. This is my India wall. This space is empty because that is where pretty little India will go. 
So I have a map, an old map of Hindustan. This is a manuscript page um, that I got when I was in India, and same as I when the map. Picture of the Taj Mahal. And just some, oh, old work relics that I keep out. Another paper mache box. This is some sandalwood. This is some sandalwood. This is a beautiful little pillow from Lynette Peters. Very sweet little Halloween thing from people that know that I don't like Halloween because they like to tease me. Actually, I got this at, um, I think this was part of the exchange, what my exchange gift at StitchCon 2019. Angel postcard from Loretta. This little book is pictures t that a friend of mine took and put together. Um, she was a talented artist in many, many, many ways. She moved to Stonington, Connecticut and took all kinds of pictures of Stonington that are just fantastic and put them into this little book. She actually died not long after she moved there of an, of an aneurysm and it was a great loss to many of us in the digital scrapbooking community. This shelf is kind of where I'm sticking odds and ends at this point. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with that. All right, so coming over here, this is kind of my seasonal wall. Things will stay here until it's time to go up, be displayed upstairs for different seasons. So let's see, this is um, Winter Wonderland by Little Cottage, or Country Cottage, or yeah, one of those. This is um, Silver Creek Samplers. This is Just Nan. This is Jan Hicks Creates. This is Jan Hicks Creates. So this is Winter Cottages. This is Winter Flourish. This is Spring Flourish. You can see poor thing doesn't have any decor, decor around it and Summer Flourish, and then My Little Life's a Beach that I stitched on the trip out to Hawaii um, for the house hunting trip. So yeah, that's, that's about it. As you can see, still pretty dreary out there. And then I have my big angel over here. Um, I stitched this after I lost my first child in a miscarriage. So this was too in memory of that baby. All right, so that is all for that. So I hope you enjoyed this look around my room. I'm sure it is going to grow and change some, but I'm loving it so far. It, it truly is my happy place. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of um, my spaces. Obviously a lot more work to be done in the knitting room, but that, that's coming along. It'll, it'll get there. So I think that's all for today, except the angel card. And I still have to buy the prints from, from Teresa. I haven't forgotten that. You were born with a purpose that is unique to you. Only you can carry it out. So be you, trust God, and believe in yourself. Wise words. It's hard to be you in today's world. I have some thoughts on that. It's hard to be, it's hard. I haven't watched Floss Tube very much since earlier in the year. I'm starting to watch it again and I find myself thinking, I don't do this right. I don't do that right. I don't do it like that. Even down to, should I start wearing makeup? A lot of you, you just look so pretty. <laughs> I hate wearing makeup. I think I hate washing makeup off more than I hate wearing makeup. Um, I don't hate it. I know it makes me look better. But it's those kind of things that you think about when you're putting yourself out in front of people like this. Um, so it's this kind of thing. I have a purpose. I am here for a reason. I am doing just fine. Trust God and believe in yourself. Even at age 57, I have these thoughts. Going on 58. 
At what point do you stop doubting? All right, guys. With those words, I'm going to sign off. Know that I love you, and I appreciate you so much. I appreciate the friendships that I found. Oh, speaking of friendships, I forgot. An exciting thing happening at the end of the year. Mike and I, well, my younger son is flying here the week of Christmas, and then we are driving over to Seattle to spend Christmas with my other son in Seattle. Spending a few days there. Ben will get on the airplane in Seattle and fly back home to Orlando. And then Mike and I are going to drive down to Portland and I'm going to be spending a day with Carolyn. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. She's going to take me home to meet her parents. We've decided our relationship has progressed enough that that's okay. <laughs> the friendships that I've made here are just astounding. They, I, I say that. They're not really astounding. I've made the same sorts of friendship, friendships in my other crafts. Knitting, digital scrapbooking. Um, some of my closest friends are in my craft world, and that includes you guys. The, the love that you show by sh sending me these things to give away. The instant connection when I show a pattern and everybody, it explodes and everybody wants to do it. I mean, it just, it tickles me to no end. I am so grateful for you and I am so glad that you are here and that we can share this love. Know that I love you and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.